G'day everyone and welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I am presenting to you a new pattern. It's a little twin pattern, a couple of shelf sitters. Now a little while ago I made twin kitties. So many of you have made them and they come up good every time. This is a quick and easy pattern and it's made out of a combination of just your basic quilting fabrics and a little bit of felt. But as you can see, we've got the king of the jungle, we've got the lion and his beautiful lioness. So cute little details, but super simple to make. As I said, great beginner pattern, and I've got your free pattern already for you. It is in the description box below. So you've got to actually click on the little gray arrow to open up that drop down box. You'll find the link there and you can print out your own pattern templates on your own home printer. Do follow the, the little guide that I have for printing. You will need to be printing on A4 paper and set your printer to be printing at actual size. Always talk to me in the comments if you're having any printing issues at all. I include all seam allowances within my pattern, so you don't have to worry about any of that. And I also highly recommend that if any of you are new to my channel, this is not dressmaking. This is a whole different genre here that we're doing. We are creating in 3D. Have a look at my cutting and layout video. It will really help you with cutting out your initial pieces. It makes a world of difference if you do it the right way. So look, let's go ahead and make this beautiful pair. So let's start by having a look what we're going to need to put these two together. We are going to start with the bodies of both the lion and the lioness. So they are both the same, but they are a different size. So we have our front and body back pieces for our lioness. I'm just using a quilting cotton that is interfaced with my fusible woven cotton interfacing. So it remains nice and flexible. So two body pieces for the lioness and two body pieces for the lion, which you can see he's just that little bit taller. Then we're going to have the chest pieces, which are appliqued onto the front. These are felt with fusible webbing applied. We've got one for the lion and one for the lioness. Then we need a wooden base or a firm cardboard base. I'm using 60 millimeter wooden discs. If you don't have them, you can cut a couple of rounds of matte board, glue them together with PVA glue, and you'll have a nice solid base. There doesn't need to be a hole in the middle. So I'm gonna be using my wooden discs. So then we also need a cover for the base that we stitch on. Um, it gives it a lovely professional finish. That is just felt with interfacing applied. So those are the bodies. We're then going to be adding tails as we put this together. So I cut my two strips of each fabric. And you've noticed that I have brought fabric into it. You could make this the entire body out of felt if you like, but it is nice to bring in a bit of a color. Just stay with all the same tones and it will work really well. So for the lioness, of course, I've got that little uh, desert sort of a floral. Those strips measure 35 centimeters by six centimeters. We're going to be folding them in, creating a little tube stitching that up and then we're going to add some cord through the middle. It just gives it a lovely curled um, rounded shape um, and it allows us to wrap them around each other. And on the lion, I will be adding a little tuft of some pearl thread. All I've done is I've got a few strands, made a knot in there and I'm gonna show you how to add that into the end as we put those tails together. So the length of your rope just needs to be a little bit longer. Just make sure you've got enough to go the full length of those tails. So let's move on to the heads, the very important heads. We start with the lion. So the lion is put together. We have the two back main pieces, which is for the head, and that's the main that you'll see around. We have a filler that goes in the middle and so the two head pieces are cut from felt with interfacing applied. Then we've got our fusible foam. It is fusible on one side, it is five millimeters, and it just gives us a nice bit of volume in that 
main section when we put those together. So if you don't have fusible foam, you could use a little piece of wadding or perhaps just a, an extra piece of felt in there. Then we have our actual face, our lion face. Let's move all these parts off. I'll just leave the eyes there. So this little face piece is cut from felt with interfacing applied. Only this time I'm using black interfacing. You don't have to do that. I just didn't want the white core showing. We're actually going to stitch this one on a little differently and add some filling to it. So it's a new technique that you may not have seen before. Then all of the face details are cut from felt with fusible webbing applied. So we've got the center muzzle piece for the lion. We've got the nose. We've got those two beautiful eyeliner pieces. And we have the little ear pieces. I'm just throwing them on here just to give you an idea. Little ear pieces just bring a bit of color to it. And then for the eyes, I just choose a button that is, this is a beautiful sort of a, oh, it's like a bronzy colored button. It's a little bit smaller. It's probably, I'm thinking it's about, oh, probably eight millimeter button. It's quite small and it's just going to sit nicely over those eye pieces and it looks like it's got a lovely eye surround. Lions have very amber, topazy kind of eyes. So if you can get something in that color where it still shows up, but it's not really loud and obvious. So that's for our line. We will be stitching the mouth section in. And then the lioness, her head is put together a little differently. So we've got the two head pieces back and front and they are just interfaced felt. And we have again, we've got the eye pieces, we've got the buttons the same and all of the face detail pieces are cut from felt with that fusible webbing applied. So once that's all put together, that will look lovely and we will be stitching the mouth in. This one is put together differently because she's going to be sewn up around the chin section and stuff from the top of the head. This one is quite different. We will also need buttons to join the heads to the bodies. So just uh, basically about a 20 millimeter size button is fine. It can be four hole or two hole, it doesn't matter. We're only gonna use two of those holes. You will need some clear craft glue um, just something that works well for fabric. You will need your extra strong thread and perhaps some pearl thread to do your blanket stitching. I'm probably gonna use my extra strong thread uh, throughout um, in a suitable color. Uh, if you are using pearl thread for your blanket stitching, an eight ply will be best. And we will be stuffing with polyester filling. So when we're putting these together, I'm going to be demonstrating the body because they're put together in exactly the same way. I'm going to be demonstrating on the lion and I will already have the lioness body put together and I will simultaneously show you how to put those heads together. So we'll work through both of them. They are done a little different from each other but all still very, very simple. So let's get started on our body. So before we start on the body, so first of all, here I've got a lioness body all done with that lovely tail attached that's going to wrap around the two of them and join them together as a pair. Beautifully filled out, lovely base on the bottom. So now I'm going to tell you how to make that body up. We start with the tail. We have to have that ready because it goes into the seam. So you've got your strip that I've got your measurements there and your materials and requirements. What I like to do is rule a line with a heat erasable marker straight down the center of that strip. And the first thing I'm going to do is fold the very end over, just a few millimeters, just fold that end over. And then I'm going to fold each side to meet that center line. And then I'm going to press that and then I'm going to fold it in half again. And there we have our tail strip. I keep that nicely closed with a clip. 
and really steam press that so it's all nice and flat. It needs to be very, very even. So next, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to start at the folded in end. Now with the lion, we're going to be adding that little tail tuft. So we leave this end open. So you're going to start and make sure you back and forth on your start and sew as close as you can to that edge all the way down to the bottom. Again, back and forth on your start and finish. And it's just a little top stitching thread close as you can to create a nice channel for us to add that um, cording down the center, but don't sew across this end. So I'm gonna get that one done. We're gonna come back and pop that cording through. So there you can see I've got the folded edge not stitched across and I've got the raw edge and that's not stitched across either. In the case of the lioness, you will stitch across that folded edge because we're not adding that little tail tuft to hers. So my next step is just to take a single strand of extra strong thread and I'm going to very carefully just find the center and I'm going to sew right close to the edge, a little running stitch all the way around that end opening. Keep those stitches nice and small because we're just going to pull that end in around our little tail tuft. So leave your thread end hanging there as I have at your start point and make your way right around that edge till you come back to the start. So there we go. And I've just tied just my first knot. I'm not pulling that in yet though. So I have my little tuft that I've made just from a few strands of pearl thread and I've made a knot in it and I'm gonna put that knotted end in here. It can be helpful to use your forceps for this. I want the knot to go all the way in. Pull that in, make sure that's all sitting nice and flush. Pull that knot right up to the end there. And then I'm going to just pull in my drawstring threads. Nice and tight around that. Keep it nice and tight, knotted off at least four times before you snip your thread ends. So there we go, lovely little tail tuft, nice and secure in the end there. So now we are going to just open up that tail cavity and you've got your taped end of your cord. So you need to tape it up a little way down. It's probably about an inch and a half. Taped it nice and tight and we're gonna leave the tape on and that's going to let us thread that through. It's a nice snug fit and that's a good thing, but it should just be enough to let you slide that all the way through. You can see how small that seam allowance is there. It's only about two millimeters. I'm gonna pull that right the way to the end. I now have that cord going all the way through to the end and I've cut that cord uh, about two centimeters from the end. So there's no cord in the very end bit that lets us sew it into the seam of the body. So now let's move on to starting the body. We've got our front and back body pieces. We're just gonna put one of those aside. We're gonna start with our chest piece, which has that fusible webbing applied. So we're going to be able to line that up with the top edge. It will sit exactly in the middle to line up right at the top there. Make sure it is beautifully centered and you want to press that one into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth. So then I take this piece to the machine and I can show you on this one. I've now sewn on the machine a very tight, small zigzag stitch. My settings, if you want to know the actual settings, I have the width at 0.8 and I have the actual, sorry, the length of the stitch is 0.8 and the width of the zigzag is 3.5. So that gives you a perfect little stitch. I use a coordinating thread. 
keep it nice and close and tidy and you get that gorgeous finish. So that's what I'm going to do with this one exactly the same. Okay, so I have my tail stitched into place on this side and when I turn it through and have that to the front, the tail's coming out from this side, which is the opposite to my lioness. So I hope that makes sense. So long as they're opposite, it's fine. Right, so now we're going to pin or clip all of these right sides together from the base. All the way around that top edge. I like to line up the, the top section. And make sure you don't capture that tail in the seam again. Just let that drop out the opening there. I will clip that all the way around and now I'm going to go ahead and sew a four millimeter seam allowance. Make sure you back and forth on your start and finish right the way around and again back and forth and then I'm going to sew that seam again and I will go over that little junction there where that tail is incorporated into the seam an extra time just so it's really really secure then I'm going to turn that one through. So I have turned that one through and I've got in there with my knitting needle to push out all of those curves. Then I've been careful to roll out all of those seams between my thumb and fingers. So now we've got that beautiful shape. We're ready to add our filling. So you want to pack this very firm. So we want to add the head at the top here and we need that, that it's packed nice and firm so that it's going to support that head well. So what you're going to notice when I'm filling is I say this time and again, we are not just uh, filling a hole, we are creating a shape with our stuffing as we go. So you need to be mindful of that. So rather than creating just a real circular little body, you need to be thinking about creating an eclipse shape. So it's more of a flatten body through here. It will come down to the round at the base because we add a round base, but you actually want it to be flatter front and back. The way to control that is to pack it while you've got it on, get it on a flat surface, keep your hand on the front and have that filling going in either side. This is also going to fill out your side seams nice and evenly while keeping that sort of eclipse shape. You can see I'm taking that all the way in. Once I get down to about here, I can start filling with my hands and really add some pressure there. And I'm gonna keep up that tension. This needs to be really firm. You see here, there's not much give in that at all. So I will be using my wool felting needle as I get down to the base. You want to stop filling about a centimetre and a half from the edge and then go in there with your wool felting needle if you have one and pack all that filling in nice and flat and tight. You really apply a lot of pressure to get that filling nice and firm. I'm gonna come back when that's done and show you how that should look. So I have my body filled and it's very, very firm all the way up to that neck and nice and flattened out on the base there, just a little way from the edge and I've used my felting needle. So you can see just how dense that filling is. I've then taken a double strand of extra strong thread, started at the back and just at about four to five millimeters in from the edge, I've sewn a running stitch all the way around and I've left my tail ends hanging came back to the same spot. I've just tied one knot nice and loose there. And now we're going to slip in our disc, whether it's your matte board disc, cardboard disc made up or your wooden disc. Pop that in. Then I'm gonna pull on those thread ends. And you'll find that pushing down and really pulling those threads in, it's gonna compact that body stuffing even more and give you a lovely clean line. 
You want to do this in a place that's comfortable. I will pull that in just a little bit further. It doesn't have to go into the center. So just a little bit further. Keep that tension up and knot that off at least four times. If you're having trouble holding that knot, just use your forceps, slip them underneath that first knot, clamp them down, then you'll be able to do your second knot and it won't slip away. So get that tied up and snip those thread ends. So now that's all nice and tied in and we've got our little doll that will freestand like that. Make sure it's nicely centered. You can see how far I've pulled it in. Our next step is to take that base and add some clear craft glue to it. You can be quite liberal here. Make sure you're gluing right to the edges. Because we're going to add that to the base, glue it in place before we do some stitching. Just a matter of centering that. It's exactly the right size. You want to check that you've got it even right the way around. Just using the palm of your hand, just make sure you've got those, all those edges glued down. We're going to be stitching it. So we're going to have a beautiful finish. Give that a good press down. And then I'm going to leave that to dry absolutely completely. We don't want to do any stitching till it's completely dry. It doesn't take long, about 20 minutes. We will come back and do that final stitching. Okay, so we're back and that little base disc is all dry and we're going to sew that one into place. So I have my single strand of eight ply pearl thread and I'm just going to have just a small knot in the end. Just going to trim that off. And I'm going to start at the back and I'm going to take my needle in underneath that base plate and I'm just going to come out somewhere through the fabric right on the edge of the body. Pull that through. So I'm just using a coordinating thread and what we're going to sew here is just a blanket applique stitch and we're going to go in just about five millimetre is this stitch. So I've gone through the base layer and I've come out through some of the fabric in the body and I'm bringing my needle out through the loop. And that's going to bring those two edges together. Just going to move along the length of one stitch doing the same thing. So my needle's going through the base fabric and through the fabric on the body. Needle through the loop again. And that's just going to create that little binding stitch that's going to follow all the way around that base. So it gives you that little binding edge. It's very quick and easy to do once you get going. And it gives it a really great professional finish. So I'll just continue on all the way around. And what you're looking for is this result here. Right, so now we've got our two bodies all done. We can pop those aside and we're going to start on our faces. I'm going to start with the lioness. They're both the heads are made slightly differently. So we're going to, we've got our two head pieces. We've got our back head piece. We can just put that one aside. We've got our front head piece, which is interfaced. And we have our muzzle piece that has fusible webbing applied to the back. And we're going to go ahead and you'll find that will line up perfectly with the lower chin. You want to make sure it's perfectly centered. You're going to press that one on with a hot iron and a protective cloth and then do the same with the little ear pieces. Remove that backing paper. Now the ear pieces, you need to leave just a little bit of room around it to sew a tiny little blanket stitch when we finish and the points come to the bottom of the ear here and it creates that sort of realistic little ear shape. Press those on too. I do them one at a time so that they don't slip under the iron or your protective cloth. Best to do it one piece at a time. You'll get it everything where it should be. So I've got those ear pieces and the muzzle piece to press nicely in place. Now there's a couple of ways that you can stitch these on. You could hand stitch. I would use... Um, your extra strong thread in the right colors. 
to do a little tiny blanket applique stitch around these pieces or alternatively you can take it to the machine and you can sew just from this edge here this is incorporated in a seam here you can sew very close to the edge with a straight machine stitch which is what I'm going to do on all three of these pieces I will match the thread to these colors to do that have my stitch quite small um, if you like that bit of hand sewing you can go ahead and do that I'm trying to show you that this can be done quite easily and quickly on the machine so I hope you can see that stitching there very very neat and tidy it's a really nice professional finish our next step is to add the nose so that also had that paper on behind from that fusible webbing now the nose sits directly center and it's about six millimeters from each edge here don't put it up here because it'll look like she's got a very very short muzzle so it just sits down just a little bit for that longer slightly longer nose make sure it's all perfectly in place press that piece on with a hot iron and protective cloth now I've got that nose all pressed into place it's nice and secure now we're going to draw in the mouth line so I do that with a heat erasable marker I want to line up the center base of the nose with the center point there and the length of that top lip is just five millimeters so just half a centimeter draw that one in and then take your ruler across the bottom and it should only be about about just a centimeter just over a centimeter straight across and putting your two marks at the side so that it's going to be nice and even you don't just draw a straight line because it will be very very severe so what we want is to use a curved edge so I just use a disc remember this is heat erasable and I'm just going to draw in that lip line all these marks will be gone once we take it to the iron so same on the other side match it up with the other side this is just the easiest way to do a perfect little lip line there we go and that's got our lovely little lioness face this face will look a lot slimmer once it's all put together so there you can see I'm now going to take this to the machine and I'm going to start up here in the top corner of the nose I'm going to sew very close to that edge when I come down to here I'm going to go down the center then out to the edge of that lip line out to this one back over it again back up and then up around the side and across the top there so that this mouth line gets stitched in two times and I'll be using a black thread and I have my stitch length set to number two so you can do all of this by hand just doing an embroidery stitch and cover that uh, those marks once you've done your stitching take it back to the iron and remove those marks so that has my nose and mouth line complete and I've ironed away those marks next we're going to add those eye um, detail pieces that back our buttons that give it that lovely realistic lioness look they are the same with both the lion and the lioness they look like little lemon shaped pieces the longer part comes down into the eye corner you'll notice it's very very close to that center template we want it nicely up against there without quite touching and again it's about five millimeters from where that um, muzzle starts to fan out again you have a good look at it and you can see there's a sweet spot where they sit there must be space under here you wouldn't drop that down to here so it all changes the look of that little face very important so I'm going to get those pressed into place and this time I'm just going to do a simple line of stitching just around in that same sort of little shape doesn't have to be right close to the edge because those pieces are quite fiddly if you feel a little daunted by those pieces on the machine you can either stitch them by hand or just sew a line straight from here straight across to that corner that would work as well okay so I've actually just stitched that one line of stitching from corner to corner it's a bit hard to see on the black 
easier to see from behind. So that's how I've done that. Because our buttons go over the top of those, which holds that all into place very well anyway. So now we're gonna put our front head piece and back head piece together. It will all match up perfectly. Use your clips and all your pins clip that all into place. And what we're going to do is sew a very small seam using a very small seam allowance. From the base of that ear, we're going to sew all the way around underneath the underside of the chin to the base of the other ear. So I'm gonna try and keep my seam allowance to about a three millimeter. I really do want it quite small. And I will actually sew that two times. On this start here, do a couple of reinforcing back and forth stitches as well, because we're gonna turn that through. You can go ahead and turn that little head through once you've got it stitched from ear to ear. Turn it through, use a knitting needle or something like that to push your seams out and roll them out, really roll them out. And we should have that beautiful little sculpted face there. Now we're going to add the stuffing. We add the buttons for the eyes once we've stuffed and closed the head because then we get some nice pull in on those eyes. So the head only takes a little bit of stuffing and thinking along the lines, as we did when we were filling the bodies, we are looking to create a flattened shape. We're not, if you just fill this up without any thought, you'll end up with a shape like this. And this is not what we're after. So you want to be going in side to side and keep it flattened out with your thumb and your fingers holding the back. And you'll be able to really fill out that chin, but keeping it all nicely squared off and flattened. So again, keeping it all nice and flat and going from side to side. Really want to fill out those cheeks, that lovely jawline while keeping that shape. So ultimately what we're looking to do is just add enough filling to give it, to make it nice and firm, but that nice flattened shape. And we need to be able to close the top of the head and the ears. So you do need to fill right up to the edge. Nothing goes in the ears, nothing at all. So you want to follow that rounded shape. Using your wool felting needle will help you through this because this stuffing in the head likes to come back out at you. Use your felting needle and get that all tucked in there. Add a little bit more, bit more felting needle till you've got it all packed nicely, just a little way from the edge and nothing at all in that ear section. So that has that little head filled out nicely. I have taken my felting needle, so everything is just packed in there really well. It's just gonna stay there out of the way of those ears. So our next step is to take our clear craft glue and I'm just going to glue the entire back of each ear straight across. We want that to be completely sealed. Bring those two ear edges together, make sure they're right and they're all matched up. Take your clips and just you can drop them in there and that'll keep it all together. While it's drying, I'm going to do the same with the other side. And then we're just going to let that dry. You do need to make sure that they are glued right down to the base because that gives us that separation of the head into the ear. So keep those all pinned together nicely. Let that dry for about 20 minutes. We're gonna come back and close off the top of that head. So now we're ready to sew the top of the head closed. We're going to take a single strand of pearl thread and I'm using my eight ply here just removed those clips. I'm going to take my needle in and bring it out at the base of that ear between those two layers. So blanket stitch, we're just going to go through all of the layers and bring our needle out through the thread loop. That will anchor that stitch in Travel along just the length of one stitch through all the layers again, each time bringing the needle out through that thread loop. You want to keep your stitches nice and small and even. 
again all the way through and bringing that thread out through the loop. So that gives a, a stitch that binds the edge so it covers up that raw edge and it gives that lovely decorative stitch going in. This is quite easy to do evenly because you can follow where the ear liner is. Keep them nice and small and even and also whenever you're doing a blanket stitch make sure that you're rotating your work as you go so that all of your stitches just gradiate straight out. So pretty simple, very quick stitch to do once you get used to it. So I'm going to go around to the base of the ear, then I'm going to pull this nice and tight across. You can stick another clip in there while you go if you like. And we're going to continue on with that blanket stitch across the top of the head and then around and finish off at the base of the ear on the other side. So now our final step, we've got that top of the head closed, we're going to add the eyes. Now I've got my buttons ready. A two hole button works best because you can indicate that little slitted cat's eye by having the holes going upwards. So lined up vertically. Once we add that right in the center and we pull that in, it's going to give, give us a beautiful sculpted in shape. So all I do is I take my medium sized doll needle, find it easier with a doll needle, and I come in from the back of the head. This is where the head is joined to the body, so you won't see your workings here. And I'm simply going to just stitch that button on. As I do it, I'm going to pull it all the way in, really flatten it out so that we get this pull in effect. A bit tricky to show you um, as I do it, but this is the effect we're going to get. I'm going to stitch both of those eyes in place just as you would any other button, um, as I said, except that you pull them in nice and tight. So that has those eyes beautifully sunk and you can see what a difference that makes. It just gives all of the shape to that face. Eye position is everything. As simple as this project is, if you get your facial features in the wrong places, you won't have that same beautiful effect. But you can see they're squeezed in nicely, sculpted in the side of the face, and that's just made it, just given that more realistic sort of a look that we're going for here. So now we're gonna put this one aside. We're gonna join their heads to the body at the end. We're gonna move on with the lion. So the lion, is put together the face part exactly the same. So you follow the same steps. You iron on first that center muzzle piece, same as we did, and the two ear pieces. You stitch them in place, leave this lower section unstitched, and then you go ahead and you add the nose. You draw in your mouth line again, same dimensions. Bring it out to the side here where the cheek comes in and then you add the eye pieces. And once we've done that, we've got that all ready, we're ready to add it to one of our main pieces. So we're gonna take that, we're going to center this. So you've got a basic center line running straight through from that divot to that point, and your center lines on your lion's face, on the nose. You want to sit this one two centimeters exactly two centimeters from the chin to the point. You want to get that perfectly in place. Now what we're going to do with this one is we are going to sew on the machine that very close little straight stitch. We're going to start at the top of the ear here and we're going to sew all the way around very close to the edge back up and around to the top of the ear again. We are leaving open only this top of the forehead here because we're gonna add some filling in there. So another way to make it easier and stop it slipping, obviously we can't use our fusible web because we want to get some filling in there. So you can just glue down the ears because the ears, they won't have any filling in them. So you can glue the ears down. That might make it easier. 
for you to keep it in the right place while you stitch that in place. I will add a little bit of glue there and I'll let that dry for a bit. Then I'm gonna get that stitching done Then we'll come back and I'll show you how to fill it. You can see just how close that stitching is to the edge all the way around up to the top of each ear. This is open here. So now I'm gonna take my forceps and just a little bit of filling, keeping everything nice and flat. I don't wanna stretch anything out too much. And I just want to plump out that face just a little bit. As you do that, there'll be a little bit of gathering, a little bit of pleating happen around that mane. That's fine. It does that in a really good way. It sort of frames up the face. So just very gently with this, you don't wanna push through your stitching. Doing the same basically as we did with the lioness where you're keeping it all nice and flat. I've got my wool felting needle ready. I'm gonna do the same thing. Now you won't feel this as full as our lioness. It's just going to be, just to give it that lovely little 3D look. Do the same as we did with the lioness till we get right to the top. Use your wool felting needle to tuck it all in there because we need to be able to just close across the top of the head. We're now ready to close the top of that head. You can see if I get those ears and I pull them out, we can make that flat across the top there. I've tucked that filling in with my felting needle. We don't need to glue this one. We're gonna go and start with our same pearl thread as we did on our lioness. I'm just gonna come in there Start, catch on those couple of layers and come out right on that edge with my knot in the end. And this time we're going to sew a blanket applique. So a blanket applique stitch is going through all of the layers and picking up some of that underside piece of the mane. Same stitch though, you bring it through the loop. Pulling that flat as you go, so you're getting your edges joined together. So coming out right on the edge of that shape. and pulling that in. Again, keeping those stitches nice and small, traveling along just a little bit each time and through the loop. And you can see that's going to close that opening. As it does, it's going to straighten out that top section. Remember I said about the pleating? See how we've got some pleating going on here? It's pleating in a good way. So I'm gonna get the top stitched and finish here on the other side. Once you have stitched across the top of that head, you can go ahead and add those eyes in the same way as we did with the lioness. Make sure you get some lovely pull in there. And there we go, we've got our beautiful lion face. So now for the next and final step on this head, we're gonna take our back main piece and we're gonna take our filler. Whether you're using a piece of felt as your filler or the fusible foam, we're gonna take this to the ironing board and just press that in place. Make sure it's nicely centered. You need room all the way around the outside edge. Press that into place with a hot iron and protective cloth. Okay, so I have that fused into place. That's just my filler. Now what we're going to do is going to add that to the back of this piece. Now remember, they are the same size, it's just that there's some pleating in there. So what we need to do is make all of those edges meet. So you're going to need your, your little clips and we're going to glue this one all around the edge. So I find it better to glue this piece rather than this piece. So it's the edges that we're mainly focusing on. So right the way around, you have to work fairly quickly because the craft glue glues, uh, sorry, dries very quickly. 
and it's really just this whole flat main area that we want to get into place. We really don't have to worry about that centre section. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to line everything up so it's easy because you've got some points there to match up. So that's where I always begin. And I use my clips as I go. So I'm going to make all of those edges meet. So I'll line up that top center. Make sure that you're actually slipping that to fit. So I've got that all clipped all the way around. Any, like I said, any tiny little discrepancies, once that's all dry, we can give that a little trim. Then we're gonna blanket stitch the entire outside edge of that face. I've now gone ahead and removed my clips because that glue is all dry and I have my long single strand of pearl thread in that dark brown to match that main colour. I've just got a knot in the end of a single strand and I'm just going to hide that knot in behind coming through the felt. I'm just going to enlarge that entry hole just a little so that knot will just pop in there. between those layers and then that's nicely invisible. So now we can go ahead and we're going to sew a blanket stitch around the entire outside edge of the main. So blanket stitch again, take your needle through all of the layers and bring it out through the loop and keep your stitches consistently even right the way around. You will have trimmed up your edges if there was anything that needed trimming and I'm just going to continue on all the way around. Remember what I said about rotating your work as you go so that the stitches are all fanning out from the center and I'm going to continue on right the way around that entire mane. And this is how your finished lion face should look. Now, if you have any white core showing from your interfacing or the back of your fabric, go around the edge of that and mark it in with your, just an alcohol marker in a matching tone. Covers it up beautifully and you've got the perfect finish. So now we are going to add these heads to our bodies. I'm going to demonstrate for you on our lioness. It's easier to show you on her. To add this head, we're going to need a doll needle and I've got a long doubled strand of extra strong thread on that. We're going to need a button for the back of the head and it's around about a 20 millimeter button. It just needs to be two holes, four holes is okay. We'll only use two of them. And what you have to work out first of all is exactly where that face is going to sit. So you need to give it a little trial run and have a look at it and have a good look at, make sure you're showing enough shoulder and neck. If you have a look at mine, you can see that the button is going to sit here. So the head is going to sit just about there. So I've put a pin where my connection needs to be. It's easy enough to change it if you don't get it quite right first time. So we start by making two little marks through our button. And this sits about a centimetre below. The button sits about a centimetre below that top seam. Top seam, sorry. We're going to go straight through one of those button holes. We need to put a button through first. And we're going to go straight through. And make sure that you're taking the needle straight through and coming out central at the front. And that you're not going through at an angle. So take that one all the way through. You can let that button go. We get to the head. So here's my, uh, my approximate spot where I'm gonna take a big bite out of. So take my needle in 
and I take up some of that fabric and travel straight across. Keep it all nice and central and lined up. Pull that through. I'm then going to go back into the front of the body, the other side. Then I'm going to come out at the back through the opposite hole. So the other hole that I made for my button. And of course, I'm gonna make sure that I'm coming back through the button on the other side. It looks very complicated, it's not. And what you'll end up with is this. So there's your two threads starting going through the button, through the body, big chunk out the back of the head, back into the body and back out through the button again. What you can do is pull that in nice and tight and check that the head is where you want it to be. So check that you've got some posability, that you've got enough neck showing, as I said. Don't have them perched right up on top. It'll look strange. It'll look equally strange if they have no neck. So that's just about right. I'm going to compress all those layers and tie that off nice and tight, keeping up that tension, knot that off at least four times before you snip your thread ends. So that completes the cutest little lion couple ever. Now I have added a little crown for our king and added a little flower on our beautiful lioness. The crown is from my little queen corgi. If you want to make that up, very, very simple. Pop it on a pin and it comes straight in there. That is just craft foam. Have a look at that video. If you love making the shelf sitters like I do, I've got a whole lot of them. So go ahead and check out that playlist. I've wrapped the tails around them. I've just clipped them from behind. You can throw a stitch in there. You can bring the tails up over their shoulders, around and through the center, whatever you like. So just a little bit of fun, keeps them together. It makes a really great gift. And of course you can embellish them, embellish them any way you like. So I hope you have as much fun with these two as I have. So thank you all for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed seeing these two come together. I hope you'll enjoy that it's a little simple pattern, a bit of a break. For those of you in masterclass, sometimes it's nice to make up something that's quick and easy um, after toiling away with your hard work. Thank you all for receiving my white rabbit so well. Um, I was very excited about that project. If you haven't seen my white rabbit, have a look at that video um, that I've just released that shows you our beautiful masterclass project for April. Um, very bunny inspired, looking forward to those results too. If you haven't joined our Facebook page, come and do so. We want to see what you're doing with my patterns here, whether it's masterclass or pay it forward. And I certainly share your work on my Instagram stories. I love to do that and your work is being received very, very well. So. I like to show off everything that everybody is doing. So come and join us there. I'll put the links to Masterclass and the links to join that Facebook page there. And if you want to chat with me on Insta privately, that address is also across your screen there. Love to chat with you on Insta. It's a way more intimate way to talk. And I just find it's lovely. I just like to hear what you're all doing. So thank you all for, thank you all for supporting me in that way and, and often cheering up my day just with a message in the morning. Thank you so much. Now, everybody have a fantastic creative week. Get to work on these two beauties and show them off. Everybody remember to pay it forward, share the pay it forward channel, external of pay it forward and on your other sewing platforms and let's get the word out there. So until next time, everybody, it's Huru from me.